Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and we're back again with another Spirit Island video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the aspects for sharp fangs behind the leaves. About nine months ago, we had the first of these aspects, Unconstrained, spoiled during the Backer Kit campaign, and I made a video and did some gameplay when that happened. So if you want to see that, I'll provide a link in the description. Uh, but the quick version with this unconstrained aspect is that it's a great accessibility aspect. It loses very little power, um, but it is much easier to play. So uh, if this is something that uh, you're like not sure you want to get into sharp fangs, you don't like the whole like having to sacrifice your presence all the time in order to create beasts, um, and then the blight restriction playstyle, let's get rid of all of that without losing too much power. So very cool aspect but not what we're playing today. Today, we are playing in circle. So this uh, also changes our left innate by getting rid of it completely. Uh, it also gets rid of this special rule over here, ally of the beasts, which means that we can no longer move our presence with the beasts. For compensation, all of our powers get plus one range for targeting lands with beasts. So we still don't have that many targeting restrictions. Um, and what do we get instead for our innate? Uh, it's a slow power, encircle unsuspecting prey. And at the first tier, you can gather a beast into target or adjacent land. If you do, do a damage in that land that you gathered that beast into. Then in the target land, if at least two beasts are within one range, deal a damage. These two are the ones that are accessible as early as turn one meaning that we can only deal up to two damage uh, on turn one and in the early turns of the game. With the old Shark Fangs, you could get three and sometimes four damage fast in the early game, whereas now we're restricted to only two damage in the slow phase. So that definitely is going to have an impact on the way the spirit feels, and because it just seems weaker, uh, I expect that uh, we're going to be a lot more reliant on the cards that we draft as opposed to trying to hit our innate every turn. Now, for compensation for having a little bit less damage early, we get a lot more damage late. This last tier says for every adjacent land with beast, deal one damage. So this can be five or six damage depending on exactly the land and the terrain and how you've got it all set up. But it can be a significant amount of damage if you have a big cloud of beasts. So in a way, it almost kind of gives you that like shadows vibes because each adjacent presence would give you a damage and now each adjacent beast would give you a damage or land with beast gives you a damage. Uh, so let's check it out. We are going to be doing a random difficulty eight or nine. I've unchecked a few of these adversaries because we've already played them twice in this series. So let's see what we get. All right, we get Sweden six on board D. Cool. All right, very exciting. Uh, lots of good adjacencies on this one, except for lands three and eight. And we start in the wetlands. Okay. Start by gaining a miner. Ooh, that pact of the joint hunt. We could do like a teeth gleam plus a pact of the joint hunt in order to uh, we go here, add a beast. Oh, it doesn't target a land. That targets a spirit. Dang. That would have been so good. Um, hmm. <laughs> In that case, we could do something like Teeth Gleam plus a Terrifying Chase. Hmm, it's really hard for us to protect that Wetlands right now. It's just a really tricky pairing. Maybe we can Terrifying Chase out our three, perhaps. Um, I do like Pact of the Joint Hunt because it allows us to do some a little bit of Dahan movement, uh, make it less likely for us to get escalated.
but this turn without the extra beast going out it's going to be hard to pull that off we could do like a prey on the builders to solve that land and then maybe just do a two near the jungle just to get ahead of the curve and hope we pull a defend on the next one it's probably fine um, and if we're going to do all that and we take this animal that gives us access to two damage so then we could you know hit this number seven like if that comes up we could like beast move in kill kind of play or no we we're doing uh, two near that's fine uh if then in that case that means we can only do two damage in the sands that's the only place we could do it which doesn't give us any value so there's no point in us picking up that animal and let's leave ourselves the flexible choice skipping frontier calls that can be really nasty in combination with the sweden escalation so that's a nice one to dodge skip the build and we get jungles okay so two near the jungle we'll get a fear and a damage um and then for encircle i think we'll just gather here and do a damage that way yeah time passes actually no we don't want to do that we want to go this way leave the explorer because otherwise we're forced to make a sacred site uh, we can only add our presence to the jungles or to lands with beasts and right now we're actually very restricted in that regards so let's gain a miner and ooh, nature's resilience perfect card for us right there so we'll take a nature's resilience we could do that with a pact of the joint hunt um and if we were to play something like a teeth gleam that would then give us the two damage the damage here with the Han gather I think that's the play it's a very expensive turn but it's a really good one for us um, we do have the ability to transform our presence into beast still so I'm going to choose to do that here just to increase our beast count and a defend for six event I always get farmers um, at explore no invaders, no to Han. Rip. Oh, but beast kills explorers. Okay, cool. <laughs> Phew. Uh, three to Han is not us, so we will ravage, build, don't build, and uh, not jungles mount. Or gosh, everything sucks for us. Sands. Okay, yeah, that sucks for us. <laughs> okay. Um, so we gather in uh, dealing one damage here and then one more damage because of the adjacencies and then we can target ourselves gather in do two damage because of pact and then here we can do fear and a beast now we at least can't get escalated on next turn so it sucks we got it once but at least now we're protected go minor basically anything cheap I like so like this uh, carapace land I really like because it's cheap so we could do that uh, we could hit a reclaim one and like do this which can't be that bad we'll go here planning on terrifying chasing that land Uh, Carapace land, I guess we're just playing it for elements. So let's defend three. Maybe we get a gather card. Event. Push an explorer to an adjacent land without invaders. Uh, if there's two or more, non applicable. Push a beast to an adjacent land with no blight. Um. Hmm. 
Hmm. We could do this. And then get one damage. That's fine. Dahan defend or something. Strife at town. Okay, ravage. Build. Exploring the sands. God. I just said that we couldn't get escalated on, and then this happens. Brutal. Life is unfair. Um, all right, two near the jungle. Fear, kill and explore. Uh, terrifying chase, two fear. Push two, plus two because of the beast. So we could kick all of this out right here. Or we could go here because there's more adjacencies. And then this beast we can do a damage with. So we'll go here, do one damage. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Gross. Time passes. Hmm. So we know we're looking at likely doing a carrots. I think we just got to reclaim all. Gain a card and trap. Just because we're going to be blighting, cascading, and all kinds of crap right there. Just kind of try and protect ourselves. Um, and so with that, we could do something like a carapace land. Oh, we need to... Um, well, I, I still have to do another growth. I might not do presence, depending on how this turn lays out. Because we could, in theory, hit our full innate here. If we do something like, I got no more zero cost cards. I need an earth and then a moon. Yeah, we need that moon in order to hit the full innate. So I'm not sure if that's possible. What were other cards here? Were these our cards? A zero cost could be significant, giving us access to that damage that we need. This entrap might just not do anything for us. Like, what if we took this card? Um, and played that. That means you're relying on being lucky. with the fear card that allows us to grow again maybe we don't play this and then we go top track wind up in the same place but that two near the jungle is guaranteed to get value this turn um, whereas this guy is not guaranteed to get any value but he is worth that beast damage Yeah, I think we do this. And just put him away. We'll put you here. Defended for three. I feel like this is a bad idea. I think I just transform that into a beast to try and salvage my presence this turn. Uh, for any of your cartridges, and the first one now is if it was one higher. Terra level two. Each land with two or more explorers, which is none. No! It would have been better at Terra level one. Wow, that's sad. And with Badlands, Beast, and Buildings, destroy a Badlands Beast. One damage, one damage. Do something like that. Push half. Now land with the most to Han. Push half to the Han, round it down. Come on. Let's do that, I guess. Okay. Blight. Town. Double Blight. Destroy your presence and you may discard a power card. 
to gain an energy. Um, energy. Okay, uh, and we have to add this. Exploring. No! <laughs> this game, we just can't win. Awful. And that's, um, sorry, we have to build too. Oh boy. Okay, well, at least we get to hit everything in this land. Um, so if we go here, be one plus three, so we four damage there. We don't even have a sacred site. Wait, we sacrifice that presence? Maybe we sacrifice that presence. Is it too late now? God. Yeah, it is. Okay. So we do fear, kill, fear, add a beast. Here, deal one damage. One damage in this lane, plus one per adjacent, kill city town. And then we get a fear and two damage. Fear, two damage, remove a beast. So we should have removed the explorer from here. Yep. That gives us at least a fighting chance. Time passes. Okay. Miner, gain an energy. Um, gain, we could go here and go like reclaim, reclaim or like reclaim reclaim those two which would be actually really nice so we definitely need a sacred site um and as far as what we go for maybe we take this devouring ants and if we do this um, I, are we on dead on perfect elements? So any sacrifice, we could sacrifice that. Yeah, sacred site here. Uh, and then we get our two damage here. Yeah, we can make it work. Okay, don't build in this land. Defend for six. Sacrifice a presence and we can discard this card for an energy. Sacrifice you. Event. Uh, right now we're hitting for five. So if we were to do that, we would take an extra blight. Uh, we'd have to basically, yeah, we can forget this pack to the joint hunt. Getting the extra terror level is worth it. And then we get to add a disease to the only land with a city. Let's clean that up for a second. Um, and then every beast kills an explorer. Okay. Uh, does nothing. Strife in a land with presence. We get one energy for the one sacred site. And uh, I guess we'll strife it. Okay, Ravage, Blight, Flip, one more Blight for Sweden, and then we have to do a Cascade, and then we have to Sweden 5. At least 5 presence destroys one. You know, I don't think that's going to be a problem. This is great. We, if we ever hit 5, we can always just like toss a present for a beast, so this does nothing for us. That's great. A decent break. That doesn't build. That does build. Exploring the mountains. Whew. Okay. Now all of a sudden you wish we played this terrifying chase because we could target this land and kick it all out. But alas, here we are. Um, jungle wetlands of fear and two damage. Let's go fear, two damage. Jungle sands is going to be a fear and two damage. Fear, two damage. Now we get to kill an explorer and a fear. 
We get our Encircle and our Frenzied Assault for three. So we could target this land, gather a beast into an adjacent land, deal one damage in that land, and then do one damage per adjacent. Or because there's two, we get one damage, and then one damage per adjacent, so we get four damage. Or we do everything the same except we're targeting this land. Hold on, let's think about this. We could also possibly clear this land, right? Because we could go like here, one damage, two, three damage, kill everything in this land. I like that better. Interesting. And then here we can do um, three damage in the land. Yeah, two fear, kill a town. Kill a beast. Okay, let's try that. Time passes. Pay an energy, reclaim, gain a miner, anything cheap. Sky's Herald is beautiful. Oh, it's real good. We can target this land, bring these to Han in, start making some progress, immediately get escalated, hate ourselves. <laughs> These lands are guaranteed to explore because it's either coast or wetlands. Um, so we're guaranteed to play this in order to solve one of those. 50% chance of getting escalated. I really don't feel like getting escalated again. Um, it's going to be hitting for 8. Could do this, this. Or maybe we do, yeah, that's defend 12. At this point, I think we need to do that. At which point we'd have to do like a presence here. Gain, can only play zero cost cards like that. And wait for what is lost. Uh, that could push. And that's a good high roll card. Without the moon, we miss out on so much damage. Hmm. Maybe we call the Dahan ways in one, since that's a guaranteed hit. Someone like this, this. Add our presence over here. We could just defend it and then no we get, we have to transform before we defend um and then if we just added this one wild that gives us everything for damage but really if we're doing that we need to play teeth clean because we're running out of beasts we only got three left on the board I think we definitely want to do this just to make sure we have enough presence. We added our beast. Yeah, I think that's the play. We'll defend this for six. There's a lot of effects that will save us here. Uh, Terra level 2, 2 fear cards, invaders to plus 1 damage, grotesque, plus 1. Add a beast adjacent to a land with beast, and then kill a Dahan and a land with beast. So we're going to lose a Dahan, but we do get to add a beast here. Helps us out with our fear card, potentially. 1 damage for Dahan, and scapegoats does nothing. Blight. Sweden 5, Mountains build, Exploring the Coast. Okay. All right. Oh my gosh. Let's get down to business. First, Fear, Kill and Explore. Fear, Add a Beast. Um, so 
So we could go gather, one damage, two, three, four, five. Five damage there, plus one, plus one. Or we could then just Skies Herald Nature's Resilience and solve the rest of it. So that's what we do, okay. So we gather in here with the Encircle. One damage for the Gather. One damage for having two beasts. Plus one per adjacent is five damage. Okay, then Devouring Ants will be Fear. Um, two damage because we're targeting a jungle. And that'll be Fear. Two damage because we are targeting a jungle. Next, um, or actually we can then just use this. Fear and two damage. Fear, two damage, kill a beast. Time passes. Great, 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 great. Minor, gain an energy. Uh, Inflame is just everything, and it's got amazing effects, and everything about this card, I love it. Add a Presence. Gain. We could prey on the Builders to solve that, planning on defending that, and then we can just kind of play just a bunch of zero-cost cards that we don't care about. All of that gives us our fully loaded innate. Wait, that's three cards that we reclaimed. Um, two near the jungle, obviously. Carapace Slam we don't care about, so we'll take the damage. And if we wanted, we could play one more animal, something like this, for Inflame. looks good to me so okay this these two lands are the only ones that are out of range for inflame and that's fine we can deal with that only one blight left on the card that's so risky <laughs> uh, great extra damage and ravaging I don't care after it adds a blight it will not Add a disease to the inland land with the most buildings. Our quadruple blighted land. God damn. Not a good scheme. Um, three to Han. We don't have three to Han on the board. Two strife in a single land, not matching a ravage card. Okay. Gather up to two. One damage per to Han present. We could go here with that. An explorer or a town from any land. And then we deny the build, which now blocks out this 8 from being a problem. And actually, that is range 2 away. Range 1, 2. So, anyways. Ravage the mountains. Don't build. And explore the jungle's wetlands. Okay, two near the jungle. Fear, kill an explorer. Savage maw beasts. Fear, two damage. Inflame the fires of life. Plus one range because we're targeting the beast. Um, fear, strife, disease. Okay. We have an encircle and a frenzied assault. Can we win the game? We target this land. Gather a beast. One damage, and then plus three. Kills that city. Right innate. Two fear, three damage. That's a terror level three victory. Wow. Oh, man. Freaking Sweden, man. Aren't we glad that we're allowed to encircle in Blighted Lands? <laughs> this, oh, that Sands was the death knell of me. That was bad. But um, that is in circle. What do I think of it? Well, considering the amount of beasts that are on the board and the way that they exist, uh, it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, one of the issues with fangs is that each 
um, like you get like this big pile of beasts and it can oftentimes be really hard to hit different lands for a ton of damage turn over turn. Whereas here within Circle, eventually, like imagine if we had all eight of these lands with one beast on them, then every turn we could hit every land for like five or six damage. And we don't need to worry about building up this pile, moving it around, getting, you know, cock blocked by all the blight. So that is really interesting. It changes the puzzle quite a bit. I mean, by having it be slow, it really hurt us in the early game. I mean, this, this land number four would not have been a problem in the same way with the old one because we've been chipping off the towns and so forth as they all build. But at the same time, with these thin numbers of beasts and the way that the blight played out, maybe we wouldn't have won this game with, uh, with base fangs. It's truly fascinating. Uh, I really like this in Circle. Um, it barely changes the spirit. But it does it just enough for the spirit to feel interesting and new and fresh. So, yeah, tell me what you guys think. I think I like this one. Um, and it's nice, too, that I feel like I could legitimately go for bottom track on turn one, as opposed to being obligated for going top track. So, that that was a nice change of pace, too. Like, just being able to play like, Terrifying Chase or something like that turn one that you normally don't. Um, yeah, no, I, I think I like it. I think it's cool. Anyways, have a great day, guys.